So, in the previous video, we discussed polynomial interpolation, and we learned that it works very well in terms of passing through the prescribed points, but that it also leads to some unwanted artifacts, which is behavior outside of our data range that has nothing to do with our data, and it also causes these unwanted wiggles that are also not characteristic of our data. And this is a general problem with interpolation, known as the Runge phenomenon. So one of the suggestions that we came up with is instead of using these polynomial functions, to use functions or substitute one function that's a little bit better suited to our data. And of course our data is pretty flat in this range, and a function that's also relatively flat in this range is 1 over x. And a function that's not at all flat in that range is x cubed. So let's replace x cubed with 1 over x. And even though we make this change and it's no longer polynomial interpolation, this is still, of course, a linear problem because the coefficients, the unknowns, enter into this problem linearly. And of course, our approach will not be changed at all in terms of the general steps. The only things that will change, the only thing that will change, is the numbers. Because now, in establishing these equations, we have to plug in 1, 2, 3, and 4 into this function. And of course, plugging in 1, so the first three coefficients will always be the same, but the remaining 1, well, in this case, it's also the same. 1 over 1 is 1, but in the case of x equals 2, It'll be 1a, 1a, that's right, plus 2b, plus 4c, plus 1 over 2d. So instead of 8, we now have 1 half. And of course here, instead of 27, plugging in 3, we'll have 1 cubed. And instead of 64, we'll have 1 over 4, 1 fourth. So the difference in the entries of the matrix is only in the last column, and it's these three numbers. Instead of 8, 27, and 64, we now have 1 half, 1 third, and 1 quarter, which of course is 1 over x equals 2, 1 over 3, and 1 over 4. And the rest is exactly the same. So now when we solve this linear system and draw this new interpolant, hopefully it'll fit our data a little bit better. And if it does, then in this we'll have a very valuable lesson that the better the functions that we choose in terms of being suitable for our data, the better the eventual result. So let's take a look at what happens. All right, so all we need to do to find the coefficients of this new interpolant is to replace these three numbers in the matrix as we just discussed. So the 8 gets replaced with a 1 half, the 27 gets replaced with a one-third, and 64 gets replaced with a one-quarter. And that's it. So our new coefficients are right here. Okay, so now let's put them in here. So A is 16 thirds. So let's see how well we did. Let's add this function to the graph. The new function will appear in green. And here it is. And you can see that not only is it a much better interpolating function, because as you can see, the wiggles have been dramatically reduced, if not eliminated almost completely. But it's also a much better extrapolating function, because at least in the region between 4 and 5, it's continuing much more flat than our original interpolating function. So this is indeed a much better result, and it conforms to the data as we saw it when we first took a look at it, much better than the original function. And why was this possible? Well, it was possible because the functions that we chose for interpolating, for interpolating in particular, this 1 over x, are just much better suited to our data. So when it comes to interpolation, experience plays a major role. But the main takeaway is that the better the functions we're using, the better the results. 
but no matter what functions we're using, interpolation always comes down to solving AX equals B.